Are unresolved issues from your past sabotaging your relationships or the relationships you're trying to get into? There are three common things that you keep doing that isn't allowing you to excel in your relationships. And I'm pretty sure the third thing isn't something you have even thought about. So let's get into it right now. Hey, hey, Conscious Crew, I am back. I'm Sia, the Transparent Therapist on the Conscious Creative Corner podcast, where we unpack your trauma to heal your relationships. And for those of you who think you don't have unpacked trauma, trauma is just your unresolved hurt. So today, I honestly want to get into helping you understand how these things that you're doing are sabotaging your relationships. They're making you feel as if you don't have long lasting relationships or you're just not ready to get into them. So the first step we have is childhood trauma. Your childhood trauma or your unresolved hurt is exponentially holding you back from your next best relationship. And now, guys, when I say relationship, let's think about relationships when it comes to your familiar relationships. Maybe a relationship that you've had with a cousin, a relationship you've had with a friend, a romantic partner. Our childhood trauma impacts us so much so that when we move into these spaces, our bodies are reacting as if they don't know how to be human. Maybe we start yelling for no reason. Maybe we start acting as if we're unsafe. It's important for us to recognize that this is happening because childhood trauma is the foundation in which we go out and, or I'm sorry, childhood trauma is the foundation in which we start to see the world, right? So if let's say you've experienced neglect when you're an adult, you'll start to think that, well, if I'm being, if I was neglected as a child, I'm just going to be neglected again in my, in my romantic relationships. Um, maybe it was abuse or loss. We have to really understand that when a child goes through trauma or an unresolved hurt, this is something that is altering their mindset. It's telling them that the world is not safe. And so if the world is not safe as a child, how could we possibly believe that as an adult, we're going to feel safe and secure? Early experiences like perhaps someone losing uh, or someone losing faith in a parent can shake things up for us. So to really illustrate this, let me read you just a really quick case study that helps put into perspective what childhood trauma might look like. So I have my trusty friend, Sarah. Okay. So during childhood, Sarah, Sarah experienced some emotional neglect and y'all yeah, I've changed words here or changed names here. So no patient identifiers are out there because I know how y'all get, <laughs> I know how y'all get. So Sarah experienced emotional neglect during her childhood with parents who were often emotionally unavailable. As an adult, she found it difficult to trust her parents and often felt anxious in her relationships. She started to fear abandonment. This anxiety led her to overly depend um, on her partner. Um, We're going to call her partner Mark. And sometimes it made her controlling, which strained her relationships. And so she had a strained relationship with Mark. My girl Sarah had a strained relationship with her mother, her parents. She had a strained relationship sometimes even in friendships because she struggled with feeling emotionally secure. So how do we help this, right? The healing process began with Sarah when she started working with a therapist who used body focus techniques um, and bilateral stimulation. So I'm going to pause really quick. If you guys haven't heard about what EMDR is. I talk about it in another video that I'm going to leave an info card somewhere in this video so you can go watch it. EMDR is a powerful, and I love EMDR, powerful, powerful, powerful therapeutic technique that helps cross your hemispheres. That bilateral stimulation helps your brain connect with your body so that emotional hurt that you were feeling as a child no longer feels as impactful as an adult. And we are doing these things or you're you're experiencing these emotional hurts on a subconscious level, but then consciously it's played out in the world. And we don't want to do that anymore, right? So the therapist <laughs> helped Sarah go through some of these methods. Um, she learned how to 
regulate her emotions. She learned how to recognize when anxiety was happening for her. Um, she developed healthier attachment styles with her and attachment patterns with Mark. Uh, Sarah learned how to trust her partner. She built more um, secure and satisfying relationships with others and her friends. This wouldn't have happened if there, if Sarah wasn't able to realize that the behavior she was having with Mark was an impact of her from her childhood trauma. That is a huge one. All right. So for some of you who are listening right now and watching, you might think like, wow, you know, maybe I didn't have the best childhood, but I'm all right. Are you really? Are you? Because if you're finding that a lot of your relationships don't last past, I don't know, month one, maybe month six, and you're realizing that this is a repetitive pattern, perhaps you are not in the right place where you need to be with your healing journey and your emotional journey. I have a quiz that y'all can take. Um, it's going to be in the description box where it, it's, a, uh, it's about 38, 40 questions where you can learn about your attachment style and your secure, if you're secure enough in your relationships and also how your relationships are impacted by who you are with your self-awareness and your needs. If in fact you take this quiz and you're like, yo, I'm scoring low in every single category, maybe it's time to find a therapist or a healing coach. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) But I digress. So number two, the third thing that's sabotaging your relationship. Can y'all take a guess? It's past relationship wounds. Y'all get into these relationships and you're thinking it's going to be all hunky-dory, grits and gravy, everything I read, good, all right. And guess what? It's not. It's not because you're allowing that baggage from your last relationship with Tiffany to impact your relationship now. You're allowing that past relationship with James to impact your relationship now. You're, you might have experienced what? Infidelity, maybe betrayal. So not even infidelity, but betrayal in your finances, betrayal in your emotions. Maybe just that toxic dynamic that a lot of us love, right? Oh, I'm going to fight, fight, fight. And then I love making up, right? Because the makeup is great. I hear it's a lot with my clients. So I'm not trolling y'all. I hear it all the time. This might be what the dynamic looks like for you, but this is also hurting your next relationship with Charles because now Charles has to take all that stuff you, you dealt with with James. Janet has to take all that stuff you dealt with with Tiffany and try to make sense of it. All the while, you're making the relationship feel like hell. It's feeling like an unescapable pattern where toxicity just keeps flowing like water. These unresolved wounds that y'all have in these past relationships have to be solved. Because if not, you're going to start feeling super jealous. You're going to feel insecure. You're going to feel reluctant to even fully open up. And that quiz that I talked about, I assess all of that with you. Because I want to make sure that y'all are in the right place with your relationships. Otherwise, you're not going to have long-lasting relationships. You're not going to have the longevity you desire. You're not going to have the reduced conflict. And that's a big one for y'all, reduced conflict. You're not going to have that if you're not really sure where you are. So I'm going to give y'all another case study, okay? So we're going to... I said James already, right? So let's say John, okay? So... John was deeply hurt by his previous partner because his previous partner was an infidel. (laughs) You know, there was infidelity in the relationship. This betrayal left John rugged. He started feeling instantaneous feelings of jealousy and security. I mean, John wasn't able to let, and I shouldn't say let, but he wasn't able to allow maybe his new partner, Nedra, to go to the store because he's thinking every time Nedra steps out, she's getting another dude's number. She is um, <laughs> you know, shaking her butt on the street corner. I don't know. <laughs> she's doing all this unnecessary stuff. And John is like legit thinking these things are happening. All because his past partner hurt him. So in his new relationship, he struggled with trust. And he often projected his fears onto uh, what I said, Nedra. Right. 
leading to a lot of conflicts and a lot of misunderstandings. And so here they are in my, in this therapist's office and, um, they're just, they're going at it all the while we're realizing that the problem isn't really Nedra. The problem is John and he needs to be able to heal from all the hurt that, um, old girl, cause I can't remember the name I made up old girl, um, inflicted on him. Okay which then he internalized. So in order to kind of heal from this, John started therapy sessions, right? Um, he started EMDR therapy sessions so that that body and brain healing um, technique where it addressed his past wounds. So yeah, check this out, right? Um, you could be in this relationship and maybe it didn't even have to do with something that your last relationship had, um, that happened in your last relationship, it actually could be something called a core wound. And core wounds are things that happen deep, deep, deep down in our childhood. And they start to express um, themselves in our relationships because that's what mimics closely the original or originating event. All right. Um, So maybe at some point, right, um, John went, John's mom, right, promised that she would take him you know, to buy the latest toy that everybody in the class had, right? And she's promising, promising, promising. But then mom, then John's mom is also an alcoholic. And so every day he would come home and his mom is just laid out on a couch with a bottle in her hand and never gets that, he never gets that toy, right? That just developed a level of mistrust. So now we fast forward 25 years now, Um, John is here and that mistrust is also occurring, um, with his partner and it's like, Hey, you say you're going to do one thing, but you're doing another. It's super important for us to recognize that this is what happens sometimes. Um, but in this case, John's partner really was shaking her thing out on 56th, 56th and 7th. I don't know. Okay. (laughs) But that's what was happening in order for us to heal. We have to recognize that that's, that's happening. Some of this healing seems so scary for us and it's important for us to feel like we can heal from this. So a community might help, right? So maybe you're going to therapy, you're engaging in some of the things that you need to do. You're developing the resources that's going on in your trauma therapy. But outside of that, it's like, Hey, I see my therapist once a week. I need something else. This is where community might come in handy. And for those of y'all who know, we got a community. We do. And if y'all willing to join, I'll tell you how to join later on in the episode. But with John, he had to really work on real bit rebuilding his emotional connections with people, his trust in people. John had to understand his sense of self-worth because that was diminished. It was diminished in the mo- at the moment that I wish I remember the name of old girl, but we're just gonna keep calling her old girl. It was diminished the moment old girl step foot into um the street and did her thing it was diminished the moment she would come home and lie to john because john all the while was thinking like oh i can really trust this girl but he has no trust in her and so now he's feeling he's feeling drained he's feeling sprawled out he doesn't feel himself and guess what? He breaks up with old girl. He breaks up with left eye. <laughs> uh, hold on. No, let's not do that. But he breaks up with somebody. Um, he breaks up with Tiffany and then, or he breaks up with Nedra. I think that's what I said. He breaks up with Nedra and now he's on to Samantha. And Samantha is now going through that same thing with John. It's just a repetitive cycle. Maybe at first with Nedra, it didn't kick in until um, Nedra's, the second month into the relationship. But now with Samantha, Samantha is now feeling the, the burden and the, the barrier that the other old girl inflicted on John, even though Tiffany ain't doing nothing bad. She's really going, she's doing what she needs to do. She's showing up in the relationship every day, but this past wound that was unresolved makes it hard for the relationship to last and so John just then starts going on this repetitive cycle and that's what we want to really want to break now when or if you're listening to this and you're someone that has gone through this or think you're going through this I want you to really take a second to do some self-assessing are you going through this 
because you're the person that has gone through hurt and you are now not trusting your partner and you're going through his phone when he's in the shower or you are going on his Facebook or Instagram, checking his DMs. If that's you, we need to trust more. In order to trust more, we have to heal those old relationship wounds. In order to heal those wounds, find someone, a professional that can help professional coach, therapist, practitioner, someone that can help to rewire those brain cells that says, hey, this is happening. I need help. I get it. We're all stressed. And sometimes we wonder if we have to even get up in the morning. Sometimes we wonder if that job is really worth it. The thing is, I understand these struggles because I hear these struggles with my clients every day. And I thought it would be a good idea to help build a community where we can feel less stressed. So I created the Less Stress Community. If you want to join this community, you just text the word stress to 860-401-0207. In the community, you're going to receive three texts a week. Yes, three texts a week that is going to help elevate your understanding on trauma and how stress affects the body. I'm going to provide you personally prompts that are going to help you reflect. They're going to push you into a space of healing, whether you know that you've gone through trauma or not. You know, I did this because a lot of my clients struggle. And of course, you only see me once a week or maybe twice a month. But I knew it would be very helpful for someone to be able to just use the text that they get to push them to, through some hard times. The best thing is it's only $17 a month and you can quit at any time, but trust me, you're not going to want to because there's some amazing individuals in the community that can help you. So not only do you receive text, but you're also going to be able to converse and exchange stories and share your prompts with other like-minded individuals who want to heal. So (laughs) I don't know what you're waiting for because I'm texting everybody right now. Make sure you hit the stress text community or less stress text community by typing stress in your phone to the number 860-401-0207 and I'll text y'all inside. Okay. So the third, and this is one that I said you guys probably don't even think about, the third thing that is sabotaging your relationships is grief. A lot of us go through grief and we don't know we're going through grief because grief isn't something that we think would impact how we interact in relationships, but that unprocessed grief and loss. So the loss of a loved one, the loss of death, divorce, or separation can lead to emotional scars. So let's really think about this. Okay. Grief is letting go of something that no longer, that we no longer can entertain, either through death, right, or loss. This highly impacts our relationship because it's unprocessed. We haven't really had time to sit and think like, wow, how has this grief um, affected me in this new relationship that I have? Or how has this grief um, put me into a position where I no longer feel emotionally connected to someone connected to someone or I no longer feel like I can really be there for someone. So consider coming, consider a a long-term relationship. Okay. So this one's a little different. Let's say long-term, which is a subjective term, but maybe for you, long-term is six to 12 months, six to eight years. Okay. You come out of this relationship and you haven't really grieved it, but you pop into another relationship right then and there. What do you think is going to happen? All of that stuff that you haven't processed, why we broke up, whether you broke up amicably or not, you're still going to bring that into your next relationship because our brains are computers. You give a brain a problem, it's going to find a solution. Is it going to be the right solution, the best solution? Who knows? But it's going to, the brain's job is to find a solution. So you break up with your your partner, move right into another um, relationship and haven't fully processed the last breakup, 
your brain is going to say, hold on, what are we doing here? Is this a solution? Okay, this is a solution. But what happened to the other person? Are we no longer entertaining the other person? And now my mind is ruminating on this other person because this is this new person is, is the solution. But we haven't really figured out why we are feeling this way. It's 100% okay to grieve a relationship, a loss. Now, if it's a loss to death, you're a widower or a widow, and you haven't completely grieved it, but you're looking maybe for someone to um, step in. So let's say you are a single dad and you and you're, you lost your wife or your partner and you have two kids and you're trying to look after them um, and you meet, you just so happily meet, bump into uh, Trisha and Trisha's like, hey, how are you? And you're, you're talking to Trisha and you, she finds out you're a widower and you are now just in this relationship with Trisha, still not having time to grieve Betty, all those unresolved feelings are going to come up. You're going to find yourself crying with Trisha um, after intimate moments, like after holding hands or going to a restaurant, you might think like, oh my God, Betty used to do this. And I never truly found time to grieve and appreciate what happened because I have this burden of being a dad not burden, horrible word to use, but I have this stressor of being a dad and Trisha just seems like the great emotional support and great physical support. This happens every day, y'all. I'm not lying. I'm not. You don't have the time to grieve what has happened to you, then you're going to bring it into your next relationship. And guess what? Trisha's going to be like, hold on, this is too much. I didn't sign up for this. I thought you already grieved the Oman already. Like, the best way she meant respectfully. She's thinking these things. But the thing is, we have to understand that sometimes things take time. And if and we also avoid, a lot of times we'll avoid wanting to even speak about one of our hurts or our loss because it makes us feel inferior. Then the devil kind of tells us, hey, don't t- don't say nothing. Don't say anything to anyone because you're gonna you're you're gonna have shame. One of the things that I heard um, in the sermon past week is the two things that the enemy uses is shame and I think rejection. I know it was 100% shame, but shame and um, I'm sorry, shame and fear, right? And so the enemy plants in that seed like, oh, you're gonna be shameful. Don't talk about your hurt. Don't talk about your hurt. Um, be very secretive. That hurts you. It hurts you. It hurts everybody around you. It hurts the people that want to be there for you. It hurts you. So I urge y'all 100%, if you are in this category where you have gone through grief, a loss, a separation, please get help. So let me give you a subset of this, okay? Grieving a loss can also look like grieving a divorce. And a divorce as an adult uh, or ch- adult child, right? And I mean, let's think about um, Brenda, okay? Brenda is maybe 30 and she's still dating. She's an adult child, okay? Her parents who have been married 20 years goes on and separates, divorces. And in her eyes, Brenda thinks like, oh my gosh, Love is real. My parents have been together for 20 years and then come to find out that they're they're divorcing. Brenda feel like she want for, she she want for dead. She she got dropped dead because her parents are no longer here together as a unit. So now Brenda goes to Dave and sees Dave at like this coffee shop and Dave is interested in her and Brenda's interested in him. And Brenda's like, okay, cool. You know, let's, let's go on a couple of dates. They get into a relationship or maybe a situationship. And then Brenna right off the bat says like, Hey, look, I'm not looking for nothing serious because I don't believe in love. I don't think this is really going to go anywhere for the simple fact that she never grieved the product of her parents divorcing, her parents separating the seemingly perfect picture of a person or um, people who were together and shared love, had children, and now happy ever after never exists for Brenda anymore. This happens on a day-to-day with adult children as well. Adult children would say, hold on, I want a relationship, but uh, it don't make sense to have a relationship because things don't last anyway, so what's the point? You are now allowing your parents 
relationship to dictate your future. Oh my goodness. Great example. Clay. Y'all remember Clay from Love is Blind? For those of you who have not seen Love is Blind, go watch. I'm going to put another info card. Go and watch the episode on Love is Blind where Clay and AD are supposed to get married. And Clay does not marry AD because he's afraid that he's not going to be a good enough man and he's going to end up like his father who cheated on his mom. And so now his, and they eventually separated. Clay never had the chance to properly grieve that relationship. And so he became a gallus, I think. I think he became a gallus before the show. He was a gallus. And then, you know, during the show, he's like, I want to settle down. After the show, I don't know what that man is doing with his life. However, these are things that are occurring in our day to day. And it's important for us to resolve these unresolved hurts so that we can have longer lasting relationships, reduce conflict in our lives, whether it's a relationship with a friend, whether it's a relationship with a loved one, whether it's a relationship with yourself, okay? Reduce conflict, inner conflict, reduce conflict with bickering with your friends. In order to do this, remember that we need to heal childhood trauma. We need to heal our past relationship wounds and we need to heal our unprocessed grief and loss of loved ones, friends, and family. Now, it's time for the culture. Yeah! My favorite, favorite part of the show. All right, so you heard me say a little earlier, um, Gallus, right? So a Gallus is Patois. It's a it's a part of our dialect. dialect. A Gallus is a term used in, in um, Jamaica or other Caribbean cult, um, cultures, but it's Patois. And Gallus refers to usually a man who um, is quite popular in these streets, okay? He is a person that goes around, gets not a lot of women, um, and does it without no care, okay? Um, I referred to Clay as a gallus. Respectfully, Clay, I'm so sorry if he was not a gallus. Um, it, it's, all, it's all in humor, okay? But that is what we would call a person that is just out here from in them streets, g- girl, um, getting up enough women with ease, okay? With ease, where he got a mo- one on Monday, two on Tuesday, the next one on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, no problem at all, all right? So next time you see one of your homeboys acting a little street-like, managales, okay? All right, y'all. I want to thank y'all for rocking with me. And honestly, I thought about it. If y'all are still a little shaky on like attachment styles and how childhood trauma can affect your current relationship or the relationship you might get into, there's going to be a video right here. Click it. You know, I always drop some gems and my, my guests, they're amazing. So click this episode right here. It's going to a hundred percent unpack how your relationships can be impacted by your attachment styles. I want to thank y'all so much for watching this episode. Make sure you share it with someone. Y'all don't even got to subscribe. Just do me a favor. Share this episode with someone. Someone that needs to know that their relationships don't last long because of these three things. All right? Walk good and keep the vibes high. And I will see y'all in the next episode. Bye.